All right, welcome back to Jatai Scissor Fundamentals. Today we're gonna to cover one of the most foundational skills you need to master in order to cut hair really, really well, and that is how to cut a clean, straight line. So the hardest thing in cutting hair is not cutting the clean line, it's making that clean line again and again and again and again every section that you go up making that clean cut repeatable and exactly on top of our guide in exactly the same spot. That's the hardest thing to do in cutting hair. So we're gonna focus on all the little nuances that are gonna be required for you to be able to do that really, really well. First thing, whenever I'm gonna cut a clean straight line, I want the sharpest scissor that I got. So today we're gonna to use the Jatai 560, which is better known as the Kyoto. And this is the sharpest scissor that I have in my toolkit. And that's gonna help me get as clean a line as I, as I can get. First thing, I'm gonna take my center section of the first horizontal section that I'm taking. I took a center part to the occipital bone to the mastoid, split that in half. Now I'm gonna pick this up. You'll notice I'm holding the comb. I got two fingers on one side, two fingers on the other side, and that's so that I can flex the comb like this. I'll go through and pick the section up. Comb teeth are away from me, gets all the way to the scalp right at the parting. I comb and then I rotate the comb. So now the only tension that I'm gonna create is whatever tension that the comb gives me. I am not putting my fingers in and dragging that because then I'm gonna have inconsistent tension because my fingers got gaps in them and I don't have the same tension in my fingers when I close them. So clean, flip the comb, that creates the tension. I lay my middle finger under to support. I put the comb back down, clamp my fingers, and then that is where I'm going to cut, straight across, right? So now you'll notice that when I went to cut the section, I cut on the back stroke as the scissor starts to push the hair out. No matter how sharp the scissor you have, any time that you put hair in it, the physical mechanics of me closing the blade is gonna force the hair out slightly. The sharper the scissor is, the less push that you get. To compensate for that, I pull back on the blade so that as it starts to push, I pull back to compensate so I end up with a clean line. We're not worried about what kind of graduation we're getting because I'm holding it in my fingers. On a human, I can just comb that straight down on the skin and then go through and clean that up. The next section, I will come in, comb straight down. You'll notice the scissor, I'm sorry, you'll notice that the comb rotates, creates the tension. I support the section with my finger and then lay my finger there flat and then cut this on the back stroke, straight across. Comb down, lay against the head, clean anything up, not bad. So, key things to focus on. Combing clean, flip the comb to create the tension, plant the fingers, cut on the back stroke. Clean that up as best you can on the doll head. Make sure it's even. Another thing I wanna focus on as I go section to section to section is an even amount of wetness and moisture in the hair. I don't want one section to be super wet and the next section to be super dry because that's gonna give me inconsistencies in the amount of elasticity the hair is gonna have. I can pull it more when it's wet, less when it's dry. So I want everything to be as consistent as possible. So the next section, here I want to focus on keeping my line perfectly straight and smooth. So I make sure that their head is even, that my comb is horizontal. As I comb away, flip to get the tension, plant my fingers. Then my comb right here is the line that I'm going to cut. My fingers match the, the comb, so I know that my fingers are straight and not angled up one side or the other. Now I'll go through and try to cut exactly 
on top of my previously cut guide. Now, if I look at that close enough, I see that that's probably a 32nd of an inch longer, right? I would rather it be longer and go back and cut it a little shorter than to cut it shorter and each subsequent section get shorter and shorter. So pay attention to that. Be mindful of where you're cutting and that you're being directly on top of your previously cut guide and make that as clean as possible. That's the hardest thing to do in hair cutting is to cut exactly on top of the previously cut guide at exactly the same length at exactly the same elevation. Comb clean all the way through and down. Plant my fingers. Oops, there's my line. Cut that directly on top of the previously cut guide. Check it, good. And just keep doing that and keep repeating that until you got it down. Clean from the root all the way down. The reason that I turn the comb away is so that I can get all this hair at the scalp perfectly combed clean all the way through to the ends. There's my line, support with my third finger. Cut that through. Stay directly on top of that. And we got, oh, not bad. See, the skin doesn't give here, so I can't do anything about that. Now, another thing that I want to focus on, I want to pay attention to, is when I'm combing, I got to get my body out of the way. Because if I'm standing in front and I have my elbow in front of me, when I go to comb straight down, you'll notice that it starts to drag to the right. So what I need to do is I need to move my body out of the way so that when I comb, I comb straight down and my body is not forcing my elbow out to comb things into a curve. Everything's going to go straight down as symmetrical and clean as I can possibly get. Most of the time your lines are off because of body mechanics that I'm bending at the wrist. I'm having my elbow in and it's dragging things to the right. So I have to maintain focus on the head, everything going clean to the head as I cut my line. And then cutting a clean line is the practice of being able to apply a cut at exactly the same spot on my fingers every time so I don't cut it too short and I don't cut it too long. Does that make sense? I hope so. So now we're just going to continue on and I'm going to keep practicing the same thing. Keep practicing, maintaining on top of it, maintaining on top of my line, not cutting it longer, not cutting it shorter, and not cutting myself. <laughs> Even though I strive for perfection, I know I can't obtain it. That's the goal that I go for, but I'm not going to beat myself up if I can't obtain it and every section is not absolutely perfect. It takes years of diligent practice to be able to do this well. And then even then when you're doing it well, you're going to have minor imperfections that happen along the way. So don't get into the mind, you know, game of it being perfect. Strive for it, but don't worry about it if it is. Another thing that I, I want to bring your attention to is when I'm cutting, I want you to notice what I'm doing with my fingers. The comb is perpendicular to the hair. My fingers are parallel to the comb. I release the comb and then I cut my line across. What I'm not doing is I am not combing everything down into my fingers and then turning my palm up to face me. If I cut here, what I'm actually going to do is cut the top layer slightly shorter than the underneath layer and it's going to force the hair to flip and shift. So I want to make sure that I'm keeping everything perpendicular to the ground.
here's our end result. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Could probably do a little better, but you know, that's, that's the way it is. I can always do better. I've been doing this for a long time, and every time I look at a haircut that I've done like this that, that shows every flaw and every fault that you have, you engage in this negative self-talk. So I want you to be mindful of that and not allow it to impede your success or impede your progress. All right. This is a very, very difficult skill to obtain and to gain. It takes a lot of practice and you have to be diligent about every minute aspect of it from combing clean from the roots down, making sure that my fingers are straight, cutting on top of my previously cut guide, cutting on the backstroke. All these things go into it and it's not easy to remember it all. It's not easy to master it all physically and technically. Don't allow the negative self-talk to bring you down and to prevent you from success and prevent you from practicing. When you first practice, judgment free. Don't worry about it. Just work on the mechanics of it. The next time, next time it gets better, it gets better, it gets better each time that you do. So please be easy on yourself practice and if you gain this and you practice this skill even if you don't master it just because you improve it it will improve your hair cutting exponentially across the board not just in doing one length cuts but in everything that you do all right because this is a fundamental skill that is building blocks for excellent technique across the board so thank you so much i appreciate you checking it out check out the Zatai academy for all other types of education and inspiration post and share your work We'd love to see it, and we will catch you next time. Thank you.